More and more people are getting cancer of the esophagus. In fact, over my lifetime, the number of people dying from esophageal cancer has risen by nearly 50%. To help turn this statistic around, I and a group of colleagues are going to run the New York Marathon for Cancer Research UK. And in a bid to raise awareness of this terrible illness, two of our patients, Wendy and Trevor, are sharing their journey from diagnosis to where they are now, just a few weeks post-op, and about to get their all-important pathology results. Good morning, Wendy. Morning. How are you doing? Thank you. How are you getting on? I'm very happy day. If I'm really honest, I'm very happy day. I think what's been happening is that uh, she's tried to eat, and then she feels really na naff. Yeah. And then she goes to bed for a couple yeah. of hours and that. And then she don't, she don't want to eat anymore because yeah. she knows she's going to feel naff. And okay. I think this is a vicious circle that's been happening. So this is about learning about what your body now does? Yes. About you coming to terms with what I've done in changing your anatomy around and what that means for you going forward. You will reach an even keel. You will begin to understand what foods trigger it, what foods don't, how to eat, when to eat, and we'll help you. But some of it is going to be a bit of you experimenting, a bit of you finding out what your body does. For five weeks after, after an esophagectomy, mm -hmm. you are doing fantastically well. Thank you. To underpin all this, okay. we need to tell you the really good news. You had T1A cancer. What it means is it was just in the surface layer of the esophagus. It hadn't spread any further. We took out a total of 45 lymph nodes. None of them had cancer in. And now you can, and now you can get on with the rest of it. You're done. I'm done. I'm finished. I'm yes. Done. Fantastic. That's the biggest smile I've seen for a long time. Makes me smile. I'm really pleased. There are, this is a rare occasion when I can say to somebody, to tell someone such good someone news. Someone around nearly over. To be fair, Wendy, you've got a long way to go because you're not back to perfect, are you? No, no way. You know, and and, and no, having a subject to me, the rest of your life is different. Yeah. So your marathon is part way through. Yours. Thank you. <laughs> I know that I have to finish this as hard as it's going to be, but I have to do it for the patients because they undoubtedly often want to give up and more often than not it's me that's telling them they can't and they can finish it and it's all going to be fine. So I have to do what I tell other people to do every day of my working life. At the start line in New York there are four of us, but five of us actually ran the race. One of my more insane colleagues flew in on the day of the marathon and flew out again the same day and one of my other colleagues didn't make it. Uh, three weeks before I was just on a five mile run and all of a sudden bang uh, my uh, hamstrings went. The marathon day was brutal. Um, cold, windy, lots of uphill but we all got round. In varying times we're all proud of ourselves for having finished. Here's Here's the medal. What an experience. The crowd was brilliant. There he is, there he is. Come on, Drew, was the, the loud chant that, that kept urging me on. It was just wonderful. For the whole of the race, there were runners as far as you could see in front of you and as far as you could see behind you. And the road was thick with us. It, was, uh, it felt very much like you were doing something that was bigger than you were race was without any question or doubt the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. There was a lot of time to think about patients current, patients past and actually a lot of time for feeling sorry for yourself but for me it was something I'd put myself forward to do. They don't have that choice so at the moments where I did want to give up I had to think of them because they can't. If they give up, then they give up on the chance of being cured and the chance of living. So not finishing wasn't an option. So we're three and a half months yeah. after surgery. Yes. How are you? Eat, actual eating is fine. I can eat just about anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I take it fairly slow, but there just comes a stage where I feel, you know, I'm full. Like we said, it's nine we'll months to a year yes, to get better yes. after this, and you're doing, you're doing really, really very well. Yeah. We thought this was 
through the wall of the esophagus and in the lymph glands when we mm. first yeah. saw you. But when we took it out, whether it was chemotherapy that did this or whether it wasn't there in the first place, it was confined just to the wall of the esophagus. It hadn't gone through mm. and there were no lymph glands with cancer in them. Mm-hmm. Which, <clears throat> looking at your original staging, mm-hmm. is really the best possible outcome we could have thought of. Yeah. And I'm guaranteed five more years of normal life. That's what you said as well. I'm not going to guarantee you. You've got, a good, you've got a reasonable chance. Yeah. And that's all we can ask for. Yeah. It's the best outcome we could have had. Um, I can almost talk about it without getting too emotional. I mean, when, I, when it was first done, I think I didn't say very much, but it was all bottled up inside. Um, but, you know, since the operation, um, I've been able to talk to people about it. So we're just hopeful now that um, that's it. Yeah. Go off and enjoy life. Looking back over this year, it's been really hard. Um, from March right through to December, at one time I didn't think I was going to live. Uh, and you go through the motions of thinking, I'm not going to be here at Christmas. It's now Christmas. I'm here. The tree's up. I've put it up. I've enjoyed doing it. And to me, this year means that it's the end of a horrible year. And I can start again. And hopefully, thanks to everybody at the hospital and all my friends, I will be able to do that. And that is my future and I hope to live for many years to come. I really do. We're all delighted for Trevor and Wendy. It looks like, against the odds, they have a chance of beating this disease. Of course, their future is far from certain, but if there's one person who can inspire them to continue their marathon, it's an ex-patient of ours who works here in Southampton at the research coalface. I, I was working as a research nurse and um, I suddenly had difficulties swallowing and by the time I was investigated, which was quite a short time really crept up on me, um, I, I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer and um, if at that time I th- thought I could still be alive now, I wouldn't have believed anybody. So when we were diagnosed, what was it? 2008, yes. And um, here I am all these years later. Yeah. 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 And, and, yeah. and really, I mean, pretty much back to normal, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. The eating is still... Yeah, but I've learned to live with that yeah. and cope and manage yes. that, yes. And you've been all over the world. So I have, You've been to yes. Australia several times. Many times, yeah. Yeah. As a patient who's had esophageal cancer, and a research nurse, I feel really hopeful for the future. Previously, uh, the mention you have esophageal cancer, I know in my case it was just, oh, that's it, it's doom. Um, but there's hope now with all the trials and the research, there's hope for esophageal patients. Over the last five years, we've seen enormous changes. We're treating early cancer with the endoscope, the telescope down the mouth, uh, so we're not having to remove people's esophaguses. Um, we are treating people now with different types of chemotherapy agents, and we're using radiotherapy, which is also having a huge benefit. Uh, and the operation itself has changed so that we now do it with minimally invasive, i.e. keyhole surgery. And whereas we used to keep people in for about 14 days, we're now being able to get them out after about uh, seven days, which is fantastic, really good. All of this is fantastic for the patient, and all of this has come from and is driven by research. I think we're at a really interesting tipping point in cancer and the way we treat it understanding how we target the pathways that have gone wrong in cancer cells, understanding how we motivate the immune system to recognize cancer, understanding how we better deliver radiation treatment, how we better carry out surgery. As we start to understand more and more about the genetic changes which take place in cancer cells, so we're in a better position to start aiming treatments at those genetic changes. And we're hoping that the next few years we'll see real shifts in the way that we can use drugs against cancers so that we can start to treat people before they have their operations, not just with chemotherapy, which kills everything in its path, but with some of these targeted treatments, which will be selectively effective against cancer cells themselves. 
For more people to survive esophageal cancer, we must continue our research. And to do that, we must continue to raise the money to support it. The Cancer Marathon will continue.